Hi, this is James Leishman. We're aboard a beautiful Nordhaven 76. We're going to do a walkthrough tour. This model is a Ford Pilot House and it's a 2015. Here on the aft deck of the 76, and this settee is very special. We've only done this two times, and what you'll notice is the settee is set forward and the seating arrangement allows the owners to sit here and have a beautiful view looking aft. Here on the aft deck, this Nordhaven 76 is equipped with an aft station, which is located here, which makes for really easy uh, operation back here in the uh, stern. And below this aft station, we have uh, port and starboard warping winches, which are hydraulically driven, and these are uh, upgraded units for the 76. We're going to go ahead and walk up to the foredeck, and uh, this boat's a wide body. We have a walkway uh, here on the starboard side, and we'll uh, take a look. Here we've got an entrance into the salon, which is nice for crew. Uh, if you have more guests, they can walk along the side of the boat and enter this way uh, without disturbing uh, maybe people eating or hanging out back in the aft deck. Walking along here, we're uh, in the Portuguese bridge. And again, there's another station both on starboard and port side and you've got full hydraulic thrusters which are proportional main engine control and then he's got a follow-up jog lever which is the rudder control and then of course start stop and your horn all right we're going to take a look at the foredeck here uh, moving forward you'll notice this forward pilot house 76 is equipped with uh, two nice seating areas huge big storage area for lines and fenders in addition to that storage area there's two uh, storage lockers which are real deep and they're great for uh, fenders and extra lines and they're located on both sides. And then moving forward uh, behind me here we've got two Maxwell 6000 windlasses and these are hydraulically driven off the central hydraulic system and there's two self-launching 300 pound piece, they're actually 330 pound a piece uh, anchors. A really neat, unique uh, feature on this 76 is this beautiful stainless pulpit, which was uh, custom. And it's the only 76 that has this, which allows you to step out here and safely stand out here on this pulpit. Stepping back here into the Portuguese bridge, there's additional storage lockers here. And moving over to the port side, we've got another nice uh, duplicate wing station and uh, this one is equipped with the thrusters, the throttle and um, this side does not have the jog lever. All right, we're standing on the upper aft deck and you can see this area is just massive. Behind me is a, almost a 20-foot tender, a couple of jet skis with plenty of more room for additional toys. The Davit's a 2500 uh, capacity, can launch off the port and starboard and even off the stern. Uh, and above me, up on the hardtop, there's uh, kayaks and paddle boards, which this uh, Davit is used to uh, basically pick those off and lower them into the water. Here at the uh, forward part of the upper aft deck, and a couple notable features are uh, this boat's equipped with compressed air and fresh water here. There's also a 50 gallon uh, fuel tank, which services the tenders and the jet skis. There is a massive garage behind this door which is really, really nice to keep uh, cleaning supplies and just extra gear. And you can see how nicely this is organized. Up forward, you'll see uh, some storm plates nicely secured. All right, moving forward, we're going to walk up these steps up to the flybridge. You can see immediately you've got three nice stid helm chairs, which uh, are turned around now. This can be a real nice little gathering area. Plenty of seating forward and aft. Alright, moving forward, 
you can see a nice electronic setup. And this is really a, a duplicate of what you've got down in the main pilot house. And we're going to go into detail. We're actually going to have the captain tell you about the uh, setup on the electronics a little bit later. Then above us, this particular 76 has the extended hardtop, which is really convenient. Uh, and on this particular boat, there's uh, storage for kayaks and paddle boards above us. All right, making our way around the front of the set tee, I want to take a look at this aft-facing seating area, which is really nice, gives a great view uh, looking aft. Right, entering the salon through these double doors, you'll immediately notice how big this salon is. It's a, this is a wide body, 21 feet beam. And to starboard, we've got a real nice settee area with um, room for eight guests for dining. And on the port side, we've got some freestanding furniture. On, on a boat of this size, you can bring in freestanding furniture because you have the room. And that allows for a really comfortable couch. And behind the couch, you've got a ton of storage. Now moving forward on the starboard side of the salon, we have a nice entertainment center and a drinks refrigerator uh, that could be used for wine storage as well. Okay, moving forward out of the salon, we're going to enter the galley. This is a very large galley. Obviously granite countertops, melee appliances, convection oven, induction cooktop. Uh, in addition to that, there's a trash compactor very large sub-zero refrigeration, uh, freezer drawers which pull out, a melee uh, microwave, and again a, a lot of storage above and below. A another really key feature on this boat is that you'll notice here we've got uh, a 50 hertz 230 plug and a 60 hertz 120 volt plug. So that allows you to use you know European appliances or American appliances Right, and exiting the galley, uh, we have a really nice, convenient access to the main electrical panel. You can see here, and again, this boat, as I mentioned, uh, is 50 hertz and 60 hertz with an AC power converter uh, system, which will allow you to you know, take on power anywhere in the world, and uh, that system will convert. Okay, off the main salon, we're going to step down three steps and forward into the owner's stateroom. This stateroom uh, is located midships in the boat, which is really, really comfortable. You can also see that uh, it's a full beam with a king-size bed, a ton of storage, hanging storage, these very nice vertical portholes, and two of them are actually opening uh, if you want to get some fresh air into the boat. Now walking over to the starboard side of the owner's stateroom, you have the owner's head. You can see it's real nice and spacious, Beautiful walk-in, shower, uh, bench seat, tons of storage throughout. And this boat also features uh, heated towel racks, so it's pretty nice in uh, colder climates. Okay, within the owner's stateroom, uh, there's a door here, which is typically kept closed. Now, if you didn't have guests aboard and wanted easy access forward, uh, this allows that. Now, if, if you did have guests aboard, they, they would not come through the owner's stateroom. They would use this. Uh, companionway here, the staircase, they would come down uh, and enter these two forward guest staterooms. The starboard side guest stateroom is fitted with uh, double bunks and then an ensuite head and shower behind me. Now we're going to exit the starboard side guest stateroom and take a look at the port side. And this is a double, and again, this stateroom has uh, got an ensuite head and shower behind me. We're going to head down to the crew quarters on this boat. Now, this this crew quarters could actually also be utilized as a as a stateroom for guests. Before you enter the crew or guest cabin, we've got full laundry, additional freezers, um, and this guest or crew is set up double bunks, quite large, a really nice desk area to do uh, you know computer work and hanging lockers, tons of storage, and, and you'll see a nice flat screen TV mounted. Now exiting the crew slash guest cabin, we've got a really nice large head, nice big walk-in shower you can see there. 
Now, not all Norhaven 76s are crew boats. Some of them are run by either a, a couple or a, a family. But this particular boat has a three-person crew, and we thought it would be kind of fun to introduce you to the crew and the captain, Gary, here. And we'll, I'm going to let him describe the pilot house. He's also going to take you into the forward machinery room and also the engine room and finish up with the lazarette. So I'll hand it off to Gary, and he'll uh, walk you through the pilot house electronics. Thank you, James. So I'm just going to briefly give you a brief layout of the pilot house. Welcome aboard the N76. Going to just start with the array of equipment here in the pilot house. Starting here on the port side, we've got a watermaker remote server that allows us to top up the water tanks, which allows us 80 gallons per hour. From there, we've got the domestic waste tank, and we've got the grey water waste tank set up, which allows us to acknowledge and see what's actually happening on board this, the vessel. We've got the wing engine. Leading across, that's a wing engine uh, controller. We've also got a fusion entertainment system on board and then an array of Ferrono screens giving us vital information. The nice setup with this, the NavNet 3D setup, um, they electronically controlled with two computers and primary systems. We've got a nice array, uh, redundant system of two radars Raster charts, electronic charts, FLIR, depth sounder, eco pilot, forward sonar, and we've also got additional equipment, for example, the bow thruster, the ABT stabilizer system. We've also got a nice setup here at the top, which is all our control station. We've got a fire, fire monitoring system, which allows us to know if there's something going wrong. Build system, pumps that are active at the present moment or not, our ventilation monitors navigational light setup, all our deck lights which allow us to illuminate outside. From there we've also got a fuel control valves which allows me to either transfer fuel manually down at the fuel transfer setup which I'll show you down in the engine room later or we've got electronic valves which you can actually open and allow the fuel to go through to those tanks that we need to. We've also got the hydraulic setup which is also very unique. Um, that allows us to control the windlass, davit, electric bulge pumps, anchor, wash, a few other things with it. And then we've got the standard Ferrona equipment, wind indicator, AIS, the GPS, it allows us to see also the deep depth sounders and everything that goes with it. And then leading down here back onto the starboard bottom section, we've got a CCTV monitoring system with a VHF, two very nicely laid out windless controls, which allow us to control the windless from inside the pilot house, by allowing the brake off on the front, I can control the anchor payout and collecting the anchor from the station. We've also got a very nice setup of two redundant system systems of NavNet, and we've also got another computer on board which we can actually put Transus, Ectus, any other type of navigating system on board. Looking towards the aft section of this big wide pilot house, she's got a seater area for at least eight people. We've got two berths also at the back with a TV that can be swung and pivoted to the forward section. And then from here, we've also got access to the flybridge via the stairway. Leading back towards the section towards the galley, we have got a powder room or a bidet or day head, conveniently located right beside the pilot house. And leaving the pilot house, we're going to be heading off to the engine room, which is down in the lower section of the vessel, which we'll pass through down. And leading down to the lower section of the vessel, past the lower suite or cabin, as we head inside, we have got a Detroit C60, 500 horsepower main engine. It's our primary propulsion on board the vessel. Just over my side here, we've got a wing engine. She is a lugger, provides us secondary power if we do need, and hydraulic power. Leading around the engine room. To the port side of the engine room, we've got the fuel transfer setup, which allows us to access all four major tanks and our supply tank. We've got two forward tanks, which 
holds 700 gallons each. We got the two engine room tanks, which is after the vessel, which holds 1,400 gallons each. We've got a supply tank, which holds 100 gallons, which allows us up to four hours of travel just using primary propulsion. Leading from the fuel transfer setup, we've got a beautiful 20 kilowatt here. She has got her own PTU in front, which connects up to the beautiful hydraulic pack, which I'll show you shortly. She supplies power to the vessel and handles our zero speed setup. She's a night service generator. Leading from the 20 kilowatt, we lead off to the 32 kilowatt Northern Lights generator. She handles all the main battery chargers, house batteries, everything aboard the vessel. She's our main workhorse aboard the vessel. And leading over to the starboard side, we've got our wing engine, which I spoke briefly about earlier. And then this is a new addition to the vessel, which has got a beautiful hydraulic pack, which handles all the hydraulics aboard the vessel. Bow thruster, stern thruster, the davit on board. We've also got the windlasses, capstans, and she also handles all the zero speed functions aboard the vessel too. She's our big workhorse too. And leading off from the engine room into the lazarette. With inside the lazarette, right down center line, we have a steering setup. She's got two dual rams to cope with the steering on this. We've got our hydraulic steering pack right there with the big funnel for allowing us to fill oil into the new oil tank. Right in the back port quarter, we got three chillers that cope with all the cooling on board the vessel with all the handling, ha air handlers. It's a redundant setup, one primary, two that follow. And just right on the port quarter here too, we've also got a water maker. She copes up to 80 gallons per hour. And leading off to the starboard side, we've got the three Glendinners, two, a setup of two 50 amps and a bypass that allows you to charge the battery chargers directly from the shore. We've also got the AC shore converter, which regulates all the flow of the power from the shore to the main vessel and corrects any frequency changes that is necessary to the vessel. And leading down forward into the forward machinery space, this is where we have all our electrical banks. We've got our battery chargers that charge our house battery banks, which allows us to run off inverters. We've got inverters off our port side. They cater to our 230 demand and our 120 demand. We've got a lot of storage facilities down here, which is, makes life a little bit easier. Leading forward into the forward section of this forward machinery space, we've got a hot water maker. On our starboard side, we've got a whole setup of water filtration. It's our house water pumps, UV lights, everything that caters to the water demand on board the vessel. And the leading forward here, yeah, we've got a bow thruster compartment. In this bow thruster compartment, we've got the anchor wash facility, and we've got a whole additional array of hydraulic demand for our capstans, bow thruster, our anchor wash that runs off hydraulics too, and it's got a neat layout gaining access to all the facilities up forward. Thanks for joining me here on this Nordhaven 76 walkthrough video. If you have any questions or want more information on the Nordhaven 76 or any other Nordhaven model, you can visit our website at www.nordhaven.com or feel free to uh, contact me direct. Thanks.